So as I already indicated, the first thing we're going to need to do is find hits, so-called hit identification. And I was about to say that your guess is that as good as mine. The difference is I don't have to guess because I know some of these things from my notes. Divine inspiration could work, but it hasn't been one of the most successful aspects. Uh, we also had this uh, strategy of finding things in uh, the uh, Amazon's rainforest or something. That's less and less common today. Today, if I'm targeting a specific receptor, I usually have to find a new drug that is, doesn't exist in nature. But there are a couple of examples. Penicillin, for instance, Alexander Fleming, uh, when he just uh, left his dishes out over vacation and he noticed the one that had the penicillin there, the uh, bacteria didn't grow. You can find lots of YouTube videos about and everything about the production of penicillin. It's a very old molecule, so I'll, I'll leave that a little bit aside for now. This is another interesting molecule, uh, sildenafil. Um, it was originally developed uh, to, I think, to treat heart disease. It didn't work at all for the heart disease. But there was a funny thing that Pfizer realized that these patients got sexually aroused. And instead of turning into a possibly minor drug that could be a help for heart disease, this turned into Viagra, which was one of Pfizer's blockbuster drugs. And it still is, at least if you're looking at the internet. I think the patent has since expired for Viagra too. But if you see that in principle, they weren't looking for a drug that would increase the, uh, the sexual level of arousedness or making you more potent. That was a pure serendipitous side effect. But of course, when they saw it read the result, in particular in combination with the fact that it didn't really have an effect on the original disease, they immediately changed direction and marketed this as a sex drug instead, which has apparently been quite efficient. You might find things in the literature. You might find things in previous patents. Uh, that's actually surprisingly common. They're so-called Me Too drugs. Uh, it has nothing to do with the recent Me Too movement. Uh, but let's assume that my colleague Professor X has found a drug that goes after the, uh, the coffee receptor. It's a very important receptor. And then I realized, but we know the structure of that receptor and he can't patent the structure. So maybe, and they are making a billion dollars every year, maybe I too should design my own drug that acts on that receptor. As long as my drug is sufficiently different, I too have a drug and he already proved that the market works. It's going to be really easy for me to get investors. So I'm kind of cheating and piggybacking a bit here just by looking at their public patent reports to make sure that I don't intrude on their patents. Because if they do, they're going to sue me to pieces. But in many cases, in particular today, there are no such leads. There is no obvious identification in the literature. I can't learn anything from the biology, no matter how many scientists I employ. And that increasingly leads us to computers and large-scale brute force testing. This is a relatively new phenomenon in science, but it has happened with the introduction of very powerful equipment, uh, both in the lab and computers. So let me show that to you.